I'd normally get up around eight o'clock, um, sometimes a bit earlier. Um, to be honest, since I've had uh, my injury, I've actually been getting up a little bit later, um, and it's made a big difference because I've found that I've recovered a lot better. So even when I get back training, I'll probably get up around eight o'clock, half eight. Um, normally do the first session of the day around half nine, nine o'clock, maybe as late as ten, but the earliest would generally be nine o'clock, latest would be ten. And um, yeah, it's pretty consistent every day. The first session is an easy four mile run. I did a big uh, session last night where it was like a bike run brick session where we were pushing the pace hard. Um, I take Maisie out with me on my easy runs if she if she's up for it. Sometimes she doesn't want to come. She sees me put my trainers on and uh, getting the belt, the dog belt, and uh, she'll just walk the other way. But um, yeah, today she was she was up for it, so she she came out and joined me for my four mile run. I live on the outskirts of Norwich and it's a fantastic area for training. A mile away I've got the university which um, has a 50 metre swim pool, a 400 metre running track which you can use anytime you want and also on my doorstep I've got the trails which go around the university, the lake and there's eight miles if you run around the perimeter so you've got eight miles of off-road running. Typical track set, we would start off like at the early, early winter where we do more volume, so we do like 10 to 11 k's on the track, and that might be just picking a session here now. It might be like four by one k with like a minute rest, and then four by 800 um, with 45 with a minute rest as well, and then going into eight fours like that might have been it. So it was quite short, shortish rest, but trying to run pretty hard. Whereas now we've kind of changed, we've changed it for the next six weeks, so. This Monday on the track we did four by one K and then we had like three minutes rest and then we did four by 600 and we had two minutes rest. So it's more, re more recovery, but trying to run them pretty hard. My long run progresses uh, as, the, as the winter goes on. So at the start of the winter when I'm not as fit, I might run 13, 14 miles, but it'll just be at a steady pace. Then each week I'll try and build on it, so it might be 14 miles, 15, 16, and then the intensity will go up as well. So last year when I was at my fittest, like before the IT Worlds, I did um, 7 miles steady, and then um, 13 miles like at a decent intensity, where I was running hard, and then a mile warm down, and that was like 20, a 21 mile run. There's a saying, isn't there? You can turn the miler into the marathoner, but you can't turn the marathoner into the miler. The next session of the day after the run is uh, about an hour on the bike. It's quite an easy pace, but I try and do some drills in this one. So I'll do single leg drills, um, five minute sets on my right leg, five minutes on my left leg, and then I'll do five minutes high cadence work, followed by five minutes of low cadence work. And then um, to finish it off, I'll do another five minute drills on like right leg, and then five minutes on the left leg. And yeah, it's pretty, um, pretty standard session and that, that finishes the second one of the day off. Key hard sets at the moment on the bike are, I'll do a, a VO2 max session. So like for instance, yesterday we did one where we did eight one minute efforts with one minute rest, which were really hard. And then we did we, went, we did a set afterwards where we did a two minute effort, two by one minute efforts, and two 30 second efforts, and we repeated that twice, that second bit. So that was one of the sessions. Another one might be a tempo, like sweet spot session, where you're doing 30 to 40 minutes at like 90 to 95% of FTP. Um, that'd be another one. And um, yeah, I'll either go tempo generally, where I'm going like 85 to 95% of threshold, or I'll go well above like 
110, 120% of FTP or, or higher, I won't generally spend hardly any time at threshold. So I've been doing uh, a lot of drills. I've been doing like single leg um, drills where I'll do maybe 30 seconds with my right leg, 30 seconds with both leg, and I'll do like five minutes like that, and then I'll swap to the other leg and do 30 seconds. Uh, I've built up, so on like one time, one session a week, I'll do a minute of each, so a minute right leg, minute off, minute right leg, uh, five times on each leg. Um, another type of drill what I'm doing is like high cadence stuff, so where I'm trying to spin at like 120, 130 RPM or above um, for like 30 seconds on and then 30 seconds off. Sometimes I'll do about 110, 120 cadence, uh, but for a five minute block. And also big gear work where it's like 55 to 60 RPM. Um, previous to, to, to doing all this, like I never believed in doing any of the one-legged drills or even like high cadence efforts. So I would just um, go out on the bike and just ride and just look at the power numbers and just stick to certain percentages of, of threshold. But since I've actually been doing that over the last three weeks, I've seen a huge in increase in what my, my powers are, what I'm holding for certain intervals, and I feel better on the bike. So I'm definitely going to keep it up. And yeah, I'm, even after just three weeks, I'm noticing big improvements. I'm trying to write, do the drills on the TT bars because what I found is you can do the one-legged drills on the road bike holding the bars and it's very easy. Whereas trying to do them on the TT bike, you really do feel a lot of dead spots. So I kind of feel like you race on the time trial bars. You want to practice the drills and like get your pedal and efficiency better in the position what you race at. So I've been doing a lot more on the TT bike for that reason. Rest and recovery between the sessions is absolutely massive for like optimal performance. Like I know personally, if I've done a hard session in the morning, if if I literally don't put my feet up or I don't have a, a kip or something during the day, then I just can't get through the evening session. Like I'll just blow up, <laughs> I won't even make it. Um, it makes such a huge difference. And like getting good nutrition in as well, that makes a big difference. But they're so important. They're equally, if not more important than doing the sessions. I don't have like a strict plan where I'll have a set amount of calories to eat during the day or like each like where I'm weighing my food up for every meal but I'll just try and eat like a well-balanced diet lots of greens um, good good sources of carbohydrates and decent sources of protein like after after sessions um, certain sessions like depending on what I'm doing I've been speaking to a nutritionist from Essex University and I'll do them in a carb depleted state but it's not low like I'm not going into it in massive like scientific uh, detail where everything's like obsessed with but it's just eating a well-balanced diet generally and um, yeah eat, eating healthy good food when you finish your sessions and fueling your sessions well. At the end of December, I had a big crash on my bike um, and haven't been able to swim really until this this week, um, which we're on now. So four weeks I've been out of the pool. Um, I've ruptured my ACJ and uh, I've been doing a lot of rehab stuff. So today, um, stretch cords, um, I'll do two sets with them. So one set's like strengthening up my rotator cuff um, for when I do get back in the pool and start doing the sessions. And the other one is with the bands to try and do something similar, some similar actions to, to what I do in the in the pool, so I can like try and keep that high elbow, that good technique, and also work on like the same muscle groups I would be if I was swimming. Um, on a Monday, I would normally swim about four to five kilometers. That would generally be like an easier session um, because of the weekend, like might have been quite intense. Uh, Tuesday would be a harder swim session. That would be like VO2 reps, 100 meters, anything from 100 meters to 400, but with decent recovery. So we normally try and take like 25% recovery of what we do for the actual, how long the interval takes. Um, a Wednesday would be an endurance one. So that'd probably be around like 5K longer reps, but just at a steady pace. And then on a Friday, I would try and do a strength one, which might be about four kilometers, but with like paddles, 
that kind of thing. And then on a Saturday, again, it'd be another like harder session where we might do a bit of like tempo efforts and some high intensity ones to finish off, like some hundreds, which are pretty hard. And that would normally be around four to five kilometers. The last session of the day is a brick session. Um, so I'll do four, a 40 minute tempo effort on the bike. Um, probably working at around 90 to 95 percent of FTP. I might do like five minute blocks, but I'll do five minutes just under that and five minutes like at the upper end of that and I'll change it for over the course of the 40 minutes. Um, and then I'll do a run afterwards, which will probably be 10K, but just at a steady pace, like see how you feel. If you feel good, it'll be a bit faster. If you feel bad, it's not, but it's a bit of a social pace, that one. Aerodynamics is becoming a huge part in uh, long distance triathlon. Um, because all it comes down to is how much power you put out and how much drag you produce. So if you can get a 10% increase in aerodynamics, it's, it's basically the same as an increase in 10% of your power output, which is so hard to do. I want to get into the wind tunnel this year and uh, like with Boardman and see see what see if I can get some good improvements on the bike but looking at what my power is and how much has improved each year if I can say get another 15 watts on the bike this year if I can get on my position and they save me 15 watts as well that's an extra 30 watts and if I did a fast course like Roth I looked at the data what best bike split said that uh, Andrew Starkovich would have needed to break four hours and they reckon that he'd need 330 watts. I mean, I think I could hold 315, 320 if I get like if I keep my cycling going as it is. And I don't know if I'd be more aero than him, but if I was, then four hours is on the cards, isn't it? I'd assess I'd assess my performance in Kona as average. I don't think it was good. I don't think it was bad. My swim was where I would have thought I would have been, like on the back of like the chase gun, like or third pack in the water. Um, my bike. I was actually surprised that I was so close to the fastest bike slip because I did the whole thing completely solo. Like, was never in a pack for any of it, so I was quite surprised by that, um, considering the power numbers weren't very good. Uh, <laughs> and then the run performance, it was a bit of a letdown, but I think that was because the heat was so bad on race day. Because prior to race day, even when I was training up, I was hitting some good times and I was running quite fast in some of my runs. So I was fully expecting to do a really good run and I thought I might actually struggle a bit on the bike. So. It wasn't that great, but that's just because I know I can do so much more. So that's why I would say yeah, it was it was average. I would oh, like I didn't blow up, so it wasn't disastrous. But I know there's so much more to come. My my ambition has got to be to win it. Like who would say that they want to get finished second to someone? Like you go there, you give it your all, aim for the stars, and if you fail, you land on the clouds. <laughs>